This film is based on a true story. The second half of the 19th century. The maids talk among themselves that the Empress of Austria Elizabeth of Bavaria scares them. Lately, Her Majesty has indeed been behaving strangely. During breakfast, Emperor Franz Joseph Reed allowed the royal schedule to his wife. However, Elizabeth seems uninterested in the endless meetings with dukes and other titled persons. The daily life of the imperial couple, like that of all aristocrats, is strictly regulated. An icon of style and beauty, Elizabeth of Bavaria has been the subject of many rumors in Vienna, including her struggle with excess weight. Elizabeth was listening to compliments from nobles with a polite smile when suddenly she fainted, causing a commotion. When Elizabeth came to her senses, the ladies in waiting escorted her to the chambers. As it turned out, the empress had feigned her fainting spell. She shared this with her cousin Ludwig II, the king of Bavaria, with whom she had a friendly relationship. Franz Joseph is aware of their close bond. In the chambers, they discussed matters. Franz Joseph is concerned that his wife is appearing in public less frequently. Rumors are spreading that the empress is ill. Elizabeth said that the cause of her indisposition is the heavy bling she has to wear when under the glare of public scrutiny. Now the empress is much more concerned with political affairs, but the husband is unwilling to consider her opinions. The last time Franz Joseph sought advice from his wife, he was ridiculed. Elizabeth has long accepted that she is merely a shadow of her husband. Or is that just how it seems? The empress is fond of horseback riding. What she wants most of all now is to get away from here, but she can't because Christmas is in two days. Preparations for the upcoming holiday are in full swing at the palace. Elizabeth, who is actively involved in sports, noticed that her daughter Valerie looked pale and instructed the maids to take the princess outside for fresh air instead of German lessons. Elizabeth strictly controls her weight, so during dinner she barely touched her food, preferring to drink water. She has absolutely no interest in small talk and gossip. Today is not only Christmas Eve but also the Empress's birthday. She turns 40. Elizabeth feels no joy on this occasion. Franz Joseph raised a toast to his wife. Later, Elizabeth pondered that 40 is the age when a person fades like a cloud. Once, Elizabeth visited the country's largest psychiatric clinic. The chief physician told the Empress about innovative treatment methods. This is not the first time Elizabeth has visited this place. She is sympathetic to the patients and wants to somehow alleviate their suffering. On the other hand Elizabeth feels that she herself is on the edge. At night, Elizabeth couldn't sleep and woke the daughter, suggesting they ride horses together right away. Valerie was very sleepy and cold, while her mother looked enthusiastic. Not surprisingly after the midnight horse ride, Valerie fell ill. Upon learning this, Franz Joseph was furious. Many years ago they already lost their daughter Sophie, who also fell ill. Franz Joseph blames his wife because taking Sophie on the trip was her idea. However, Elizabeth is convinced that Sophie could have become ill in Vienna as well. Franz Joseph made it clear that he would no longer allow his daughter's health to be jeopardized. Elizabeth often remembers Sophie, who would have been 22 years old now. In Sophie's private chambers, everything remains as it was. Tonight the husband did not join Elizabeth for dinner. She had no appetite, so she intended to talk openly with her spouse. However, the servant said that his majesty was already asleep. Upon asking if her husband was unwell, the servant replied that his majesty was feeling well. Despite the late hour, Elizabeth's eldest son, Rudolf, paid her a visit. He is aware of the mother's plans to embark on a journey after New Year and asks for permission to accompany her. Elizabeth did not object. They soon arrived in Northamptonshire, England. It was the year 1878. Everyone is looking at Elizabeth to see if she has aged. Without greeting anyone at the court, Elizabeth rode on horseback. Later, she encountered Bay Middleton, an old friend and a renowned equestrian of his time. He never married Charlotte, his fiancée. This fact worried Marie of Bavaria, Queen of the Two Sicilies and Elizabeth's own sister. When Marie retired to her chambers, Elizabeth was introduced to Louis Le Prince, an outstanding inventor. He had heard that the Empress of Austria showed an unusual interest for a woman in technical innovations. Learning that Louis Le Prince had invented a device could capture moving images, Elizabeth initially thought it was something like a photograph. The inventor explained that the difference was that a photograph doesn't move. The Empress scheduled a meeting with Louis Le Prince for the next day. As agreed, he recorded her on video. Currently the device cannot record sound, only black and white video. Later, Elizabeth went for a horse ride with Bay Middleton. She enjoyed being away from palace life and her demanding husband. During lunch, Bay made many jokes, and Elizabeth laughed at his jokes and flirted. Marie of Bavaria asked Rudolf in a whisper what his father thought of it. The young heir replied that his father gives her complete freedom. Later, Rudolf directly told his mother that he didn't like her close friendship with Bay. There were rumors, and Rudolf didn't want gossip to reach his father. However, 
Elizabeth cared little for silly gossip. Rudolf felt ashamed of his mother, behaving like a child and not thinking about her role in their imperial family. This night Elizabeth came to Bay inappropriately dressed and asked if he found her beautiful. Bay replied that she was like sunlight. That was all Elizabeth wanted to hear. She did not expect anything more between them. Elizabeth often goes for horse rides alone. Only in these moments does she feel truly free. Once, Elizabeth fell off her horse and lost consciousness. She woke up only when she heard a gunshot. Elizabeth took the parting with her faithful racehorse very hard. Marie tried to console her sister, who screamed that she didn't need any other horse. Elizabeth also declared that she would no longer see Bay because some gossip monger attributed a romance to them and turned the sun against her. Leaving England, Elizabeth said she never wanted to see her sister again. In March 1878, the Empress returned to Vienna. The husband said he didn't expect her back so soon. Franz Joseph had much to do today, so he intended to visit his wife's chambers later. In the evening as promised, Franz Joseph came to her. Elizabeth made it clear that she was ready to fulfill her marital duty as a sign of reconciliation. However, the husband was in no mood for this. The passion had long gone out of their marriage. Elizabeth decided to teach her lady-in-waiting Ida Ferenczi horseback riding. At one point she saw her husband, strolling and flirting with another woman. Elizabeth took fencing lessons. She also learned that the woman walking with her husband was named Anna Nyowski and was 18 years old. She was married for the second time to Franz Nyowski, a railroad employee. The first marriage broke up because of her husband's addiction to drinking and gambling. Elizabeth doesn't look particularly upset. She understands that Anna is younger, so she has all the advantages. No beautiful hairstyle will overshadow youth. Nevertheless, the Empress wearing a black veil to remain unrecognized, decided to follow Anna Nyowski. When the court painter was drawing the Empress's portrait, he mentioned that her complexion had changed. Franz Joseph interrupted them. He was here to remind his wife that tonight they were having dinner with Rudolf, who was leaving for Prague tomorrow. Smelling smoke, the Emperor thought the maid was smoking. But he does not know that it was actually his wife. Suddenly Elizabeth asked the artist if he had heard anything about video. The Empress is convinced that video will soon replace painting. During the family dinner, Elizabeth preferred to remain silent while their son's mentor spoke about the importance of discipline for a young man, but intellectual curiosity is equally important. Rudolf raised a toast to Prague. At night Elizabeth came to Rudolf, startling him. Her heart is broken at the thought of her son leaving home for a long time. Rudolf said it's his duty. He will be studying in Prague. In the morning, the prince was seen off on his journey. Elizabeth watched from the window. Now thanks to video technology, she can see the sun every day, but it barely helps her. Elizabeth demands that the maids tighten her corsage even more. With each passing day, the empress becomes more irritable, and her daughter sees it. Elizabeth practiced fencing with her husband. Franz Joseph wanted to cheer her up, but the opposite happened. Elizabeth said that after the son's departure, she cannot stay here, so she also intends to leave. Elizabeth would like the husband to get away from his responsibilities for a while and keep her company. However, Franz Joseph as emperor has too many urgent matters. He also forbade his wife to take their daughter Valerie with her. Elizabeth feels that she controls nothing in her life. This makes her do insane things. Elizabeth sinks deeper into melancholy. The only thing that distracts her is meetings with Louis Le Prince. She believes that his brilliant invention will change the world, although even now many people laugh at him. The Empress is not surprised by such a public reaction because people always fear something new. When Elizabeth was injured, the husband did not come to visit her, he simply sent a doctor who concluded that the fracture was not serious. Bavaria, May 1878. During a boat ride with her cousin, Elizabeth confessed that she had completely lost interest in life. Ludwig said she can stay here as long as she wants. Later while dancing with Ludwig, Elizabeth could hardly lean on her sore leg. Early in the morning, she came to his chambers and simply fell asleep next to him. Waking up, Ludwig whose teeth looked very bad without dentures, smiled at Elizabeth. At dinner, Ludwig said he wanted nothing but desserts. His addiction to sweets is the cause of his dental problems. Many at the table noted the slimness of the Empress. Elizabeth was indifferent to such compliments. When Ludwig treated his cousin to melted chocolate and asked if it comforted her, she just smiled. In the morning, Ludwig had a hearty breakfast, unlike Elizabeth, who limited herself to just a cup of coffee. Ludwig noted that she looked bad. He wished his cousin would put the gloomy thoughts out of her head. One of Elizabeth's most devoted ladies-in-waiting, Marie Feshtetik, said that a certain count had proposed to her. This is the woman's last chance to get married. The Empress said she would not allow it. She would not want to lose her loyal lady-in-waiting. Vienna, Austria, July 1878. The walls of the native palace oppress Elizabeth even more. However despite everything, 
Elizabeth missed her pets and her daughter. Valerie is offended by the mother, who left home for so long and cannot even take care of herself. At least that's what the father says. Elizabeth smokes a lot and entertains herself as she can. From a beauty, she has turned into a gaunt, unattractive woman. A gala reception was held at the palace. At the table as usual, there was idle small talk. By this time Rudolf had also returned home. According to the young man, the monarchy is coming to an end because it is an outdated form of governance. Elizabeth advised her son to be more careful with expressions because his father clearly would not approve of this point of view. However, Rudolf does not hide it from the father, who blames his wife for everything. Without waiting for the end of the dinner, Elizabeth left the table under the bewildered looks of the guests. Both she and her husband are going through a difficult period. Elizabeth hardly sleeps, and Franz Joseph does not like that she neglects her duties as empress. His task is to lead the empire to prosperity, while she should simply embody it. Their personal happiness plays no role. Elizabeth visited a hospital where there were severely wounded soldiers. She took Valerie with her. One of the soldiers said that all he wants now is a cigarette. The empress gave him what he wanted, and then lay down next to him and smoked too. What Valerie saw did not make a good impression. The young princess told the mother that such behavior is not appropriate, and she is ashamed of her. During dinner, Elizabeth told the husband that she is concerned about the number of wounded. She would like to somehow help resolve the conflict with Hungary. Franz Joseph merely waved it off, unwilling to discuss political matters with his wife. However, Elizabeth did not shut up, and Franz Joseph slammed his fist on the table. She did the same in response. Softening, Franz Joseph asked his wife what her whim was that he could fulfill. At first Elizabeth laughed historically and then said she wanted an Indian tiger or an extension of the mental hospital. The husband fulfilled her second request. The chief physician was surprised that the empress liked being here. Elizabeth is indeed curious to observe the women who ended up in this place for one reason or another. Doctors treat them with warm baths. In her palace Elizabeth also takes baths. By her husband's order, she is regularly visited by the doctor for checkups. The doctor prescribed a strong sedative to the empress to combat insomnia and melancholy. Summer Residence of the Empress, August 1878. As the doctor prescribed, Marie Festetic regularly gives the Empress opioid injections. Elizabeth looks and feels worse. The Emperor's birthday arrived. However, Elizabeth did not participate in the celebration. Instead Marie Festetic was present, pretending to be the Empress. Due to the veil, none of the guests were supposed to notice the deception. However, the corsage was tightened too much, so the lady-in-waiting felt unwell. Elizabeth was worried that now the courtiers would say that she had gained weight. To pass the time, Elizabeth played the piano. Later, she cut her luxurious red hair. Elizabeth also regularly swims in cold water, disregarding her health. Despite everything, Marie Festetic takes care of the Empress. Learning that Elizabeth had cut her hair, another lady-in-waiting Fanny Fifalic burst into bitter tears. It was Fanny Fifalic's duty to take care of the Empress's hair, it was her whole life. Ida Ferency comforted her. Elizabeth now forbids Marie Festetic from eating sweets and high-calorie food to prevent her from gaining weight. Looking at her mother, Valerie wants to cry, but it is not appropriate. It seems that Elizabeth has completely lost interest in life. Nothing brings her joy, not even good music. Franz Joseph feels that his wife has long been living in some other world. September 1878. The Empress invited Anna Nyowski for coffee and directly said that she wants to find a mistress for her husband. And Anna Nyowski despite being married, is the ideal candidate for this role. Elizabeth's only wish is for Anna to be kind to Franz Joseph. The embarrassed girl admitted that the day she met the emperor was the best day of her life. As they reached an agreement, Elizabeth hurried to leave. She asks the maids to tighten her corsage even more. To lose weight, she eats a meager dinner. Valerie drew a drawing of the father's birthday for her mother as a present. On that day the empress was so staid, and the young princess sincerely admired her. Only Valerie did not know that behind the veil was not her mother but Marie Festetic. Elizabeth is about to go on a trip again. She leaves the house with a calm soul because she will be accompanied by Marie, who has lost weight to the right parameters. Ancona, Italy. October 1878. The Empress and Marie got identical anchor tattoos. Later, Elizabeth accompanied by her ladies-in-waiting, went on a sea walk. The captain asked the women to descend because the wind was picking up. Instead, the Empress went to the bow of the ship and took a step down towards the water. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.